Okay, we will go ahead and get started. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to the, this Arabic class. Before we get into today's lesson, uh, we're going to talk about uh, two definition words up here. And I got them written up here. This word here, we want to be able to pronounce it. This one and this one, and then we're going to look at the definition of it, and then we're going to get into today's lesson. I think most of these we might have had before, so there's no harm in going back and looking at it again. Uh, <clears throat> the reason I'm doing this is because this particular one right here, brother asked me about it uh, this past Friday, in Juma, you know, as the meaning of it. And so I decided I put this one, up, this one here, I'm sorry, up here again. All right, <clears throat> let's take a look at this word right here. How do we pronounce this one? Say it, sister Lovna. Right, right. Do you have? Do you know what it means? Think. Yes. Uh, she said to think, and I got the definition written down here from the. Uh, right. Uh, it means to. Reflect, okay, what you are doing, you also thinking too. So here again, we don't limit ourselves to one definition because as she said, to think, another way to say think is to what? Meditate, right? Uh, to meditate, okay, uh, to think on, to ponder. This, this is coming up right out of the dictionary, the dictionary. Or meditate, okay? The word, this word here, fuck, car, okay? Come from the word what? Fakara. Right? This is the verb right here. And we know that the Arabic verb is based on what? Three letters, the tri little root word, right? Okay? So this is where it comes from. Okay? What about this word right here? Right. Okay. Uh, what does it mean? One more. Because we had this word before. Look at this. Huh? What if I do this? Well, I just need to back it in. So I'm gonna... Okay. What do we say when we say the sunset prayer? My grip, right? Can we not see, okay, if we put M-A in front of that, that means place of, right? You know, normally in Arabic, M-A is a prefix that means in place of, right? So we'll say it then, Maghrib, right? So then, maybe if that is the place where the sun does what? Sets. But it has a more deeper meaning than that. It means to be black, right? Like raven black, like a bird. So this is what we get in a controversy every Ramadan. Every Ramadan we get in a controversy about this word right here. Why? It's because everybody's saying, what time does the sun set? Right? Okay. So according to this, it says that when the sun set, you know, we see what we call the twilight. We see that little reddish hue. You know, the sun is setting. It doesn't pass the midpoint. So it is setting. Okay. But it had to completely set. That's why there's some Islamic uh, communities they wait till the sun has completely went below the horizon. So they wait till it completely black before they make what? The Maghrib Salat, okay? Or it's time to break the fast, so to speak. You know? But a lot of times we are so impatient, we are hurrying you know, because we've been fasting all day and we want to break the fast. And everybody said, hurry up, brother, it's time to break the fast, break the fast. But there are some communities that said, no, it has to be so many degrees below the horizon. And most people say about 19 degrees. So it means the disappearing of a light. It means to be black. And let me just tell you what the dictionary said. This is coming out of the Arabic dictionary here. Uh, the complete definition is said to disappear. It said to set the sun or uh, to go away. It means sunset. It means also the west. So that means then we need to look where? When the sun set, we do we need to be looking in the north, the south, the east? We need to look where? Because that's another meaning of the word, the west. So it means we need to look toward the west, okay? Because a lot of time when you look toward the east, it is completely dark or whatever, but the sun has to <coughs> set, so now it is setting, 
okay? It means the western part of the earth, and you see it here. It is also from the word of Gurab, which means raven. And raven is a bird, right? And that bird is not yellow, not white, it's black. It's one of the darkest black that can be found. See? So it means to be to be black. And it means to be externally black. This is from the dictionary. It said jet black, raven black. Okay? So this is why I'm referring to the sun. So this meaning being that this is something that we have to ponder over. Once again, reflect, <laughs> meditate. Are we breaking the fast at the proper time? You know? And here's another mistake that we make sometimes. I said some brothers and sisters, is they go look at their window and they might be looking toward the east. And the sun is still in the process of setting. When they look toward the east, it is dark over there. But we know we need to look toward the what? The west. And then that's when it really has set. Okay? So I just want to go over that. Those two words right there. The brother actually said, well, brother, we have a controversy all the time. You know, uh, when, what time do the salat, when we make salat of Madrid, you know, and then we have to look at these times on these uh, press schedules. They are only approximation a lot of time. They are calculated, you know, sometimes, but we have to look at our particular locale too. The longitude, you know, uh, the latitude, and et cetera. You know, to get the precise time. The sun is in the process of setting, but has it completely set? Has it gotten dark? I mean, black? See? Okay? All right. <clears throat> Any questions about that? What we want to talk about today is this word here. I'm pointing my back. Okay? So, let us say this word here. How do we say this word here? Anyone? We got what? Maj zoom. Yeah. Maj, you may say maj. And then we have the Z zoom. And then no, we have to elongate this. Why do we elongate it? Because we have a water right here, right? This elongate this vowel here. Right? Okay. So we have maj zoom. Okay. Which is the word that means Jesse. Jesse. Now, this is a part of speech. You know, we're talking about Arabia, we're talking about the Arabic, and we're talking about grammar, right? Okay? So what does the Jesse, this is the word for Jesse, right? So the Jesse move has a basic meaning of expressing a command. Express a command. And it begins a lot of time in the Quran with the word may, Or let. Okay. Or as in, may he write, or let him talk, or what have you. Okay. So it is just the Jesson is used, this word is used, uh, when making a negative command. About to say, hear that? Is the arrow? I don't know. I just I can't go check it right now. Making a negative command. It also meaning that we negate the past tense. And we're going to look at some examples. But when we are using the gestive, they have what they call controllers. Okay. And here are the controllers here. We have the word lock. Okay, we have the word what? Lamb. Okay, we have the word what? I'm put some poon over here. Okay, and read, there's a reason for that. But we have this word here, which is what? F A L. Okay, right? And then we have the word here. Right? And then we have this one. Right, right. Okay, voila. Okay? So, these are what we call controllers. They are normally starting at the sentence or they're in front of the word that makes it what we call <clears throat> a command. You know, and it's negative command. Okay? Look at this example right here. Uh, this, this here expresses a wish or a command. Let's say this 
since it's right here. This first one right here. Number three right there. Okay? We are over here. So, how do we say this? And as a matter of fact, five is translated is as may, may he, okay? Or let him, something like that, okay? So, look at this word here. So, we have it there, right? So, we see this is a control. Is everyone following me here? Okay. Yes. Okay. Alright, so we have here. فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقُ Okay. So, if we look at that, then what does that mean? I tell you what, let's do this here. Let's pick out individual words up here. Let's pick out the individual words up here. Let's try to come up with the meaning of the individual word. What word, you can take them, they don't necessarily have to be in the order. What word up here do you recognize automatically? Any word of his seem familiar? In Santa. In Santa? Right. So we got this one. So that means what? Mankind. Mankind. Okay. Sometimes they say humankind. Okay. Right. So we got that, right? What else up here we know? <clears throat> right here. At the end here. So this has to tell us something being what? Created. created. There we go. Cre created. And why do we know it created? Because we have the, the calf, right? The lamb and the clock, right? Paula clock. He created. Okay? So we got that. Okay, what else up here do we know of? Come to, come, come to our mind. Hmm? Say it again. So what did that mean? Is it for notice to look? Right. Mm -hmm. Or to notice, to look, or consider. Think, right? Okay. To consider. Okay. So if we put all this together, and this is uh, chapter 86. But don't, let's turn to it and I'll come on. 86. So this is a sentence that is justed in expressing a wish or a command. And you should find something like, and you know, we got different translations here, so some authors use different words. And you should see something like, so let the human being, we got that, right? So let the human being consider what he has been created. What's the word? What verse? Uh, 86, verse 5. Now let man think from what he has created. See? Okay. And you said that, right? You said to look at, uh, uh, to think, to consider, to meditate, to ponder, reflect. All of these are words, are adjectives, right? That we can use to describe what we should be doing here. To consider. Do anyone, Quran has anything different? Someone read another uh, Quran translation. So let man consider from what he is created. See? Okay. Let man consider from what he is created. Do we have another different Quran verse? You got the same Quran? No, it's different. Oh, okay. Different All right. But it's the same. You'll say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now, is this a wish or command? This particular sentence here. Right. Huh? Okay. Let's look at the next phrase right here. Do we have 
have again, we have a controller also, right? Isn't this not a controller? Because we got it listed over here as one of the controllers. It's controlling this sentence, the digestive mood. You know, if when we say mood, M O O D, we're talking about what state of mind or state of condition that we're in. Because we, average words are just like human beings, you know, they have a certain mood. There's some days we wake up, we're sad, we happy, you know, we, we, we lethargic, like we don't have enough energy, you know, you know, so happy is a state, is a mood. What kind of temperament I'm in? See? What kind of mood I'm in? If we hungry, you know, your stomach is growling, you know, you, 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 you're hungry. You know, you're in a certain type of mood or condition. So it is with, with Arabic words, you know, they, they have certain types, and like some English word too, certain types of mood, condition that we were in. Okay? So, what are some of Okay, somebody's coming in behind me. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, I, I thought you had left the door. Okay, I see him now. Okay. Just find this chair and one. Okay, so back to this particular sentence right here. So, what can we deduct? What can we find out a reason to ponder what this particular statement here is saying? To, to read it, okay? Okay. Ready to hear it? Read it out loud again, sister. Okay. okay. What would make this, if we look at this sentence, what would make this what we call digestive? The very front, right? Okay, here we go. This is what we call a what? Controller. Controller. That's what I'm trying to get everybody to see. What is the Arabic word for control? We call it a dead just a tool of just a dead guess. Because majum, that's meaning that the verb has to be different. So after before the tool come in front of it, mm -hmm. and after the tool come uh, uh, in front of it. So before the two come on front of it, have to look certain way. Then I, as soon as this two come to it, the verb gonna be looks different somewhere. Right. What well, makes it look different? Look, look at this. If we notice here, F A L file has what on top of it? Sukun. Yeah. Look here. This is what I put up here. Mm. Said so the form which ends with the final root letter. See. Loses their found vowel altogether and take a sukun. Take a sukun. And we gave an example with this word right here, which is what? Yaktu, right? Which means what? Look at the try little root right here. Look at the prefix. <clears throat> what is the prefix? It's ya. What is ya? Okay, what is what is the Try another root. The calf, the ta, and the what? The ba. Kateba. Kateba. The same way like fa'ale. Right. Kateba means he wrote, right? So you know this got to do with something like a book, writing, some manuscript, or whatever, right? Because we can de deduce this just by looking at the word up here. But we have a prefix in front of it. Yeah. So what does that prefix mean? Yeah, anyway. Somebody else sent. Say it again, but that's somebody else sent. Somebody else sent? Say it. Like who? Or somebody else write it. Mm hmm. Like it describes somebody like, uh. I thought young and old. Yeah, but sometimes it's here you know, you know how, you know, you talk about the other. Yeah, over here mean it's still writing. It is meaning present tense. Right. Because Kedera is a past. Tense. So Yaktub is still writing. Right, right. Like who are you? But who doing the writing here? Like he, like who who are you? Okay. 
He said he. Right? So we have we have the word here what? Yah. Y-A. What we have? Yeah. Yeah. With a K? Yeah. 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 Two. Two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you say this meaning what? Yeah, he, wrote, he, he wrote. Right? He wrote. Okay. So this would be what? And notice right here, the last letter right here, even though I don't have it, 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 it they say grammatically correct is that you should put the sukum there, according to the grammarians, not me, grammarians, but we know it also right if we leave it off, if we leave it off also, right? Okay, we can also leave it off. But grammatically correct, it should be there. See, you hear, you hear now today, you know, these politicians, you know, when they're talking, they said to be politically correct, right? Even though they're correct, but they said politically correct, that meaning that they they dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's, and et cetera, okay? To be politically correct. So be, to be grammatically correct, then the sukun would be there. But as they say, you still can write it without the sukun, okay? And where we at? So we know that is a condition of being something in the justice, justice mood, right? Because it has controllers. And here are the controllers. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? What do we get? Okay. We already done that one. Let's jump down to this one here. Number three. I will say this, this one negates. When I say negates, what I'm saying? Right, not more. Right. Negates meaning something like disapproving something to disavow or whatever. So we now we negate the past. So this is another thing that the Joseph will do is negate the past. Or negation of the past. So what do we have here? How do we say this? Right. So what does it mean? Okay. Look at the word here. What we got? Ah, the right. So this meaning that what? Look at the word here. Alama. Okay? This word here, ya is what? E. Right? Like we did in the other. Okay. Lam, which is our controller here again, right? Negates he from doing what? He did what? Not know. He didn't know. He did not know. Because then we said, where is it? It's a controller. Is one of the controllers. So in negating, negation of the past, he did not know. Okay? Let's look at some of these other examples. Let's, look, let's turn to the Quran. Back, back to the Quran. Let's go to chapter 17, verse 22. And we're looking for the word, and I might not have a complete whole chapter here, but I'm, I'm going to start out with la. Okay? La That's what we want right there. Okay? We want to point out some of these examples because the Quran is full of Jesse. Jesse's mood. Okay? So, what do that mean? You all tell me. So, love, we all automatically know that means what? Negate. Negate. And it's saying do not do something. Or what? Negate something. Mm -hmm. 
And what it says, do not make what? To like, make not with Allah, you know, another God. Another God or an object, so to speak. Do not make another object of worship. Do not make with the law another object of worship. We you know that's what the Jews did, right? When uh, Moses, you know, led them out of bondage, you know, they began to worship the calf, right? They made it the golden calf, right? And Allah said, do not make any other graven, according to the Bible, I would say, do not make any other graven image of me. Right, because how can we make something another God? We've never seen God, so we don't know how He looked. He doesn't. The, the Bible said that God made man in His image. Do we know? We don't know that. He could be looking like some of these creatures we depict all the time, and you see the movies like monsters and aliens, and look like a lizard. So we don't know how Allah looks because we've never seen Him. So we don't know because. How can they say he made a man in his image when we never seen Allah? And we don't know, and we said he has no equal. We, he has nothing like him. So what right that negates that? We, here today they talking about Easter. You know, and what does a bunny have to do with Jesus Christ rising from the dead? You know, a bunny, as I was telling my wife this morning, as he's coming here, uh, has a, is a sign of fertility. What does an egg have to do? See, all of these things are pagan holidays. Uh, uh, when things are, and the Christians have been doing, when things somewhat, they'll take some truth and they'll add falsehood with it. Just like the Christmas suit. They do the same thing, okay? Santa Claus and all these other things of that nature, okay? So let's go to another chapter. Do we see that? Do we see the law in the beginning of that verse? Okay? So when you see that, you say, what? Negation. Okay? What about, uh, let's go to Surah Baqarah. Chapter 2, verse 22. Uh, yeah, voila. Right there, what we see said, what? Voila. Uh, Taj Alu. Taj Alu. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, fala, fala, taja ali la hienda. Okay, now I got wala. You say fala, what you say? Fala, fala, taja ali, taja ali la hienda. And the man don't say I have wala. What do you, you better get fala or wala? Wala. Wala? You say you have fa? Yeah, fala. Unless there's two verses in there, one got fa and one got wala. This is a long word. It should say, Wala Tashlu Lilahi. See that? Yeah, yeah, where he said, Fala. Fala Tajalu Lilahi and Dadam and Kum Talamun. So, Fala, yeah. Okay. But some other people saying they have Wala in theirs. Who got Wala on theirs? Did you see you have Wala on yours? Say what I'm supposed to be reading again. Okay. You, did, you should have Wa, Fala Bala. And then you should have Taj Alu Lilahi. And that uh, then. No, no problem. Oh, no. That's at the bottom part. No, mine got five at the bottom. You got water at the top. You got water at the top? Mm-hmm. There's another bird water. Another, see, don't know what I'm saying? It might be, it might be another person that's saying five, but I'm looking at the one saying walk. Well, no, it's the same bird, but it's just how it's it set up. How it's set up the way to yeah, the, one, one, one word right into the other. Okay. Yeah. So it's fine. Okay. All right. So then, what does it mean then? Don't make one Allah. Why Why you know? Right. Do not make what equals to Allah. Mm -hmm. So you become li lahi. That means two, mm -hmm. not of two, two, two Allah. Okay. Let's look at another one with. Uh, Let's look at, uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, same chapter, verse 187. We'll start out with Tilka. 
Kududula I. Tioka Kududula I. What is it? According to this is 187. Okay, we're going to start out with Tilka. See that? Those. Tilka who do do. See? Do who do do la e. Everybody see that part? No, these are the limbs on me. Right. Okay. Surah 2. Surah 2. Surah 2. Surah 2, verse 187. 187. Okay. So what we want to point out here is So you're looking for this فَلَا تَقْرَبُوهَا That's what I'm looking for, exactly. Exactly what I'm looking for. Do we see that? Yeah. Okay. So here it says, so that فَلَا meaning so. So it's saying those are the limits of God. And then it says, so do not approach them. See? So it's giving us a command here. So do not approach. Okay. Let's look at another one where we can see. Uh, okay. Well, eight. Let's go to, uh, we did that one. Okay, let's see. Okay, chapter 96, verse 5. We're looking at some of the examples here. Start out with Alama. <coughs> okay. Do we see any negation in there? Uh, anything? Do we see a controller in there? See the lamb, right? Alama al insana ma lam yalam. A lamb is what we're looking for. Actually, the lamb. Here. Male. Right. right. So we see it here. He. Who, who is he here? Who is the he here? It said he taught the human being what he did not know. Who is he? Allah. Allah. Right? Okay. A lot of times the author might not write that in there, but we have to understand it by the context of the sentence. Maybe the verse before or after. We know Allah is talking here. So he, Allah, taught the human being what he did not know. What about uh, what? Oh, let's look at it. Then we let Brother Tark come up. What about uh, what we say all the time, anyhow? When we say "lamb you lead, well, lamb you lad." Okay. Uh, this is. Uh, let's go to chapter one twelve, verse three. One twelve, verse three. Lamb you lead. Walam Yulad. We have a question for you. Yes. Hmm. How do we know Allah is a he? <laughs> okay. It's because, okay, he is a personal pronoun. Listen, everybody listen up here. Okay, he is a personal pronoun. So uh, when Allah uh, uh, describes himself, you know, we cannot circumvent him. We cannot confine him in one area. So they use the personal, personal, personal pronoun like he, us, and our. A lot of times people want to say that us and our sometimes might be the angels and what have you. But they use personal pronoun because we cannot confine, like that particular surah, surah, uh, you know, what it says, Allah sits on the throne of sovereignty. Now listen what it says, still answering your question. Allah sits on the throne of sovereignty, meaning that he sits somewhere. That's confining him. We cannot confine him. We cannot impose limits on him. It's just uh, a way of talking personification. 
and it's a personal pronoun. So this is why I say he, you know, okay? So because we cannot describe him perfectly. We cannot describe him perfectly no matter what we say. Whatever we think Allah is, he's not that. He's better than that. Whatever the, the most majestic, the, 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 whatever you can think of when you put something, say, well, this is the best, he, he even better than that. So he is a, the way they use that to, to signify that this is talking about Allah. And it's also mankind giving him personification. Like a lot of times we'll say, like I said this here, look at this piece of chalk right here. If I take this piece of chalk and put it on the floor and let it fall on the floor, sometimes they say, well, it or he, it dropped to the floor. So this is personification. We're giving inanimate objects, chair, tables, whatever it might be, uh, ability to have human characteristics. If I just say this chalk just jumped off this table onto the floor, we know it can't just do that. It had to be some force, wind, or I pushed it, or whatever, caused it to roll off and get on the floor. So this is why the Quran uses personal pronoun to describe Allah. He us and ours, because we cannot circumscribe him, confine him. So that's where the he comes from. I'm uh, hoping that was satisfactory. <laughs> okay. Any other question about Jesse? Because next Sunday we're going to look at some pointing nouns and uh, things like these, those, things that are near and afar, and etc. Okay. Any other questions? Do we know what justice mean now? I mean, we still need more examples and. Uh, I can give you yeah, some more, but I was just looking. I at mean, the, I mean, I mean for I, the, yeah. Okay, I tell you what I do. Next Sunday, I continue this on. Yes. Okay. We're gonna go into further details and, and break it down. Yes, please. We're gonna do this. Hit this again, and we're gonna talk about the subjunctive and etc. Don't know that. I'll tell you about it. I'll tell you though. So all of these things are important. And why and then also we if we, for a little time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend a little time on sentence construction. How do we construct these sentences in Arabic? Nominal sentences. We we looked at last Sunday, last time we met up, brother. We looked at what kind of sentences anybody remember? Anybody remember what kind of sentences we looked at last time we met? <laughs> oh, we don't study, do we? <laughs> We looked at, conditional? that's it, conditional sentence. And we say conditional sentence are made up of how many parts? Two parts. Two parts, right. Do you want to tell us, to say it again? Short, well, you know what? Right. Okay. And, and the short does what to the sentence, the, con the conditional sentence? <laughs> it states the conditions. And then the other part fulfilled that condition. Meaning that Allah says, if you do this, then you might be rewarded with that. Or if you do that, you might be rewarded with this. So it's a condition of the sentence. Okay? All right. So this is what we're going to do next time. You know, we'll, we'll break that down again. Okay? All of this is good because why? We want to be able, when we read the Quran, it's good to be able to recite in there. But I'm the kind of individual that I can recite. Read this, but I want to know what I'm saying. I want to know, just like we do in English when we're in grade school, noun, pronoun, adjective, effort. I want to know this also in Arabic so I can relate because that's where the meaning of this sentence comes in. And as you notice that all of these different commands we have out here, they are good, but you see sometimes it comes down to what? A choice of words. Sometimes that author doesn't use the, the correct word. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, it has it, the meaning that he has standing there for the every word is not there. See, so that's why they got some Quran that are true to the Arabian. See, sometimes they do what we call what? Paraphrasing. You know, they hit, it, but they, in the, they don't hit the bulls out. They in that circle, though. They in the vicinity, but they didn't hit it directly. So this is what we want to try to do, be more precise as possible. Okay? All right, brother. Uh, talk when they can come up now and we'll go over some other Arabic bills. And last Sunday we, we talked about numbers. I don't know if you're going to continue on or if you want to do some yeah. What have you got? Don't let me dictate. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. <laughs> I'll work it out, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. <laughs> okay, brother. Thank you, brother. Yeah.